uh, colony in Savannah and a colonial maker on each side on the left and right. This was completely different in uh, 2006 or 7. something to see. Kurtz moved from, uh, uh, from his home on Sinclair Avenue, in which he lived with his wife and his wife's mom. The um, Fuller family had a lot of money. Captain Fuller had been an, an attorney. Uh, he, had, he had a nice income. And Kurtz was not a guy who came from a lot of money. They lived on Sinclair Avenue. And then in 1921, they were able to buy the home on Penn Avenue, which I'm going to show you right now. Uh, this home on Penn Avenue was built in 1921. They had four children when they moved in here, and their fifth child was born here. This is Penn Avenue. And going uh, straight ahead from the bottom right, deep in the photo, that's 8th Street, little Penn Avenue dead ends. Where would Penn Avenue be? It would be three or four streets east of Piedmont. It runs north and south. It runs north and south. So it starts at, it starts at Ponce, and it just goes three blocks, blocks to 8th Street. Wilbur Kurtz III estimates that his grandfather paid $5,000 uh, for this house in 1921. And Kurtz not only had the garage put on the back, he had a studio built up above with windows facing north so he wouldn't have any sunlight, direct sunlight, distracting him. And he worked there from 1921 until his death in 1967. Is the house still standing? Is the house, the house still is still standing? there. And uh, when I gave this talk at uh, Spalding Nixon's Culture Club uh, a couple months ago, gentleman who owns the home came forth. I had a chance to meet him, and he's invited us to go and visit his home later on in the summer. We're trying to trying to set a date to go in and get inside the house. Here quickly are a couple of paintings that Kurtz get for a major uh, a major uh, commission he received from a bank in Abbeville, North Car South Carolina. <coughs> Abbeville considers itself to be the birthplace and the graveyard of the The first secessionist meetings in the South were held at Abbeville, and uh, I'll show you in a minute, uh, the last cabinet meeting of, uh, last cabinet meeting of Jefferson Davis took place <laughs> Calhoun, who lived near, who lived near uh, Abbeville. Uh, here's the first secessionist meeting that took place in Abbeville. These are large paintings that adorned the main, adorned the main banking room, this first National Bank of Abbeville. And here is the, uh, the most important one. It's very large. It's about 14 by 6 or 7. Here we see uh, Jefferson Davis present, presented a very much like the uh, Last Supper, the classic painting. And he's a, presented as a Christ figure with John C. Calhoun in the background, almost like God the Father, looking down on uh, Jefferson Davis and the apostles leaning forward or backward. It's a magnificent painting. It's a fantastic work of art. And if you're ever in the area around Abbeville, it's worth stopping to take a look because the town itself has been beautifully preserved. Here's another major painting that he did. It's, he was commissioned to do this by bankers right here in Atlanta, the first national bank, the first, uh, the, uh, sorry, the, uh, Fed, the Federal Reserve Bank in, in Atlanta commissioned this painting and it hung in the entryway to that uh, building for many years. It's about 18 feet by six or seven feet. It's a magnificent piece of work. And when I came to talk at Margaret Mitchell House at Christmas time, a gentleman raised his hand and uh, uh, he, he identified himself as the artist's grandson, Henry Harrison Kurtz. And he told us that uh, in 1967, when his grandfather died, he wrote a letter to the Federal Reserve Bank in Washington uh, or perhaps in, in Atlanta, asking them to give him the painting since he was the artist's grandson. And you know what? They did. They gave it to him for nothing. But the story gets better. You know what he did? He then turned around and sold it for $2,000. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. Imagine owning, imagine owning, uh, owning that uh, painting today. Well, the painting, when he sold it, the painting was bought by the son of one of the gentlemen here, one of the congressmen who's pictured here. That man's son bought the painting and gave it to the Woodrow Wilson House Home and Museum in Staunton, Virginia. But the painting is so large, uh, the Woodrow Wilson Home is in the Victorian home that he was born in in the 1880s. It 
doesn't have a wall big enough to accommodate the painting. So the painting is exhibited down the street in the local Sartre's bank, in their banking room. And they're very proud to have it. Interesting, isn't it? The twists and turns that these, that these paintings encounter. Here's one of Kurtz's most famous works. He worked very closely with the Atlanta Chamber of Commerce for many years, with all the, you know, the elite business uh, uh, cast in Atlanta. And this was the so-called Ford Atlanta game campaign of uh, 1927, when the city fathers were trying to make Atlanta the hospitality and transportation hub of the Southeast. It didn't have that distinction yet. And Kurtz imagined the city of Atlanta in historical perspective. We see the mules uh, down here, who dragged the first locomotive to town. We see the original surveyor hammering the zero mile marker post into the ground here for the first railroad to Chattanooga. We see Whitehall Street, which was the name of Peachtree Street, south of Decatur and Marietta, is called Whitehall Street. We see the uh, viaducts, we see the choo-choo trains, and we see Kurtz's vision of the future with that airplane up there. This is now being sold by Margaret Mitchell House and the Atlanta History Center for $25 as a poster being made, uh, being sold for $25 in conjunction, thanks to the publication of the book. The Depression era was really difficult for Kurtz because his ordinary commissions dried up, but he was lucky to get, uh, he was lucky to get uh, government work. His benefactor there was the, the art collector uh, Rhodes Haverty, who uh, had a big mansion on Peachtree Street, and he was a big FDR man. FDR put him in charge of all of the federal programs in uh, Atlanta and in the Southeast, and he hired Kurtz to supervise all the artists who were working for the federal government during the, during the Depression. So Kurtz had a nice income during those years. Here he is painting Whitehall. One of the, I own two versions of Whitehall, one from 1933 and one from 1942. I think the next one, the slide, will give us a better idea of what's involved in Whitehall. Whitehall was a building built out of timbers. It was not a log cabin. It was located in what we call today the West End District of Atlanta. It was built in the 1830s. Kurtz was trying to discover the origins of Atlanta as a frontier town before the railroad came in the early 1840s. And he envisioned this town, this building, as the original essence of Atlanta. It was on the stagecoach stop. In those days, the stagecoach went from Decatur, which was a thriving agricultural town, through what we call today Atlanta. This spot was in what we call today the West End, and it went all the way to Noonan on the Chattahoochee, so the products could get to the river to be shipped. There was no railroad as yet. So once again, Kurtz paints a public space with people from various walks uh, of life. It's a hotel. It's a plantation stop. It was a forecast, a symbol of a future vocation as the hospitality and transportation hub of the South. As I said earlier, I was lucky enough to come back to some paintings and have them uh, in my home to admire every day. Here's the zero mile marker being hammered in. He considers this to be an important uh, uh, moment given by a politician. 